Burr, it's a little, a little cold in here. That ought to help. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. We're gonna keep on keeping on with with our 79 Kenworth build, building it up like the the Smokey and the Bandit movie. We gonna do what they say can't be done. And on today's episode, I think I'm gonna start tackling some of the some of the bodywork on this truck, getting it a bit uh, ready for eventual paint. And the first thing I want to tackle is this hood. Now, this wasn't the original hood on this truck. The original hood had a, a different uh, cutout for the Canadian air intakes. And actually, the fellow I bought this hood off of, he was telling me the story of the truck. It was actually a beautiful Kenworth, and they were hauling grain with it. And I guess it just hit a soft shoulder and tipped over in the ditch. And so he ended up parting it out. But he actually sent me a picture of what the truck looked like in its original day. So anyway, we'll get going on that. We'll see. I'm not a body man, but I'm going to see if I can try and fix up some of this damage here and, and smooth that out. And then last week I started actually working on the top of the bunk. Now it's pretty cracked up from just spending 40 years outside in the weather. So I started sanding down to sand out all those cracks and we'll have to build this back up again. Same thing I did when the, the bunk was off sitting on the floor of my other garage. So we'll start working on that and then obviously we need to sand down this. This is the remnants from the sandblast and you can see how rough it is. And so I gotta start working that down as well and getting it smooth. Getting it ready for some primer and eventually some paint. So with that, let's get at her. We heard talk of the bandit slipping. Uh, gone into the shit house is the exact phrase we heard. Now, may I tell you boys something? He is in better shape now than he's ever been in his life. Trust me. So first up, what I think I'm gonna do is grind this out a little bit and make some room for the, the mat and resin that we're gonna use. And it's not only that crack there, it's obviously all this will crack there and this hole's too big because probably when, probably there was a washer underneath the signal light and when it fell, it just ripped it out and that's why the hole's much larger than it should be. And then there's also a good crack down here that we'll have to patch. And this one's lifted a little bit, so what I'll have to do is grind that smooth. But we'll get started on that, and then I'll probably use a metal plate just temporarily screwed in there to make sure that this is lined up the way it should be. And we'll patch it both on the top and the bottom for strength. And then this is the, this is kind of the, so the wiring comes, comes in from the hood there, and then there's little eyelets that hold it against the side here, and then it kind of comes through and supports it to the signal light. So what I'll probably do is, is build this up as well and redo this support. So never got, never done uh, fiberglass repair before, but I've watched a few, few videos on YouTube. So we'll give it a go and see how it turns out. So that dust really shows you where the stress cracks are. So obviously when the truck tipped over, this pushed in and it created all these stress cracks. So you can really see when the dust hits them. So what I'll have to do, I guess you can take the mask off. Uh, definitely don't want to be breathing on fiberglass dust. So, 
I could either sand these out or I'm thinking just using that flapper wheel on the grinder because it cuts it so fast. So we'll, we'll smooth out that, uh, take all these cracks out of the gel coat. And then of course we'll, we'll lay in some, probably some short strand fiberglass filler and then sand this all smooth. It's Go in a bit a little bit more work because I found that of course I wanted this big enough to be able to feather out the mat but uh, if you look here you almost have to get all these stress cracks out you not only have to go through the, the top layer but then the undercoat kind of the gel coat undercoat and get all the way down to the fiberglass to get those last little bits of stress cracks out of there so a little more clean up here and then we'll we'll get ready to start passing. So well, I didn't think the uh, driver's side needed as much work because of course it fell on the truck tipped over on the passenger side. But I guess over all those years again of sitting outside in the sun and then the dust actually exposed all these cracks on this side. I guess I got a little bit of grinding to do on this side as well, but there's no major cracks. There's one little one here. Looks like there was some Bondo in there, so someone patched it, same as in the front. Someone patched it somewhere along the way, but no big deal. We'll just grind out all these stress cracks on this side and keep moving forward. Now the L-O-G, you gotta make a commotion like a D-O-G, not like a D-O-G. most of them. <laughs> Once you take the gel coat off you can you can see daylight in behind. And look at that. They were trying to build another one. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. All right so I guess I'll put the hood down and we'll we'll mix up a a batch of epoxy and See if we can't fix this crack. So I got this little repair kit. And what do we got in here? Some resin. And some fiberglass mat. And a little spreader. And the activator. So we'll mix this up. When all else fails, read the instructions. Mix up a little batch and I'll cut some I'll cut some little strips of this fiberglass mat and we'll go ahead and start laying it in there. Okay, to kick things off, I'm gonna cut this fiberglass mat. Now they say you should cut it uh, two to three inches wider uh, than the uh, the crack on either side of the crack. So we'll we'll cut it about six inches and see how that looks. So of course you want to get your fiberglass mat pieces all cut out before you start mixing up any epoxy. Uh, it's looking a little wide. We'll probably maybe we'll cut it down to four inches, a little wider than it needs to be. But you want to pre-cut all these pieces because once you start, once you mix up your uh, your resin, it actually can harden up in about ten minutes, so you don't really have time to be cutting all the pieces. So it's best to kind of pre-cut them and and make them exactly the way you like and just have them all sitting there. Okay, so next what I wanted to do was, I also wanted to put some silver tape underneath this hole here, because we're gonna try and fill this hole in and fill that crack. So I'm just gonna put some, some tape there so all the resin doesn't just leak through and fall down onto the tire. That way when the resin hardens, you can just take the tape away and then I can do the same thing and build a, a layer with, with resin and mat on the uh, on the bottom other side of the fender so we'll put that in there and as i always say if some is good more is better so we'll put a second piece on and then we'll finish cutting out all the little 
the little squares and strips of a fiberglass mat to the size we need. Something like that. Okay, so we got all those cut. Now we're going to mix up the resin. And I figure what I probably should do is next time I go to the body shop, get those clear cups with all the numbers on the side with the, the different levels for mixing paint. It would work really good for this kind of stuff too. So for now, I just took a clear solo cup and marked out 100 milliliters. We'll just mix this up 100 milliliters at a time. So we'll pour that in and then the hardener, we actually measure the hardener by drops. So for that amount of resin, you got to put 30 drops of hardener in there and just give it a good stir. Something like that. Now this stuff's pretty strong smelling, lots of VOCs. So you either should be wearing a mask or, or open one of your garage doors up for some fresh air. Okay, so that should be good and mixed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint down. Now you can either use the, the plastic spreader that comes in the kit, but I prefer to do it uh, like Bob Ross with a paintbrush. I think this works a little better. And, uh, allows me to kind of press it in into the crack a little better. So we're just going to paint on a, a good thick coat of this on the, on the fender. And you're obviously going to want to paint it as wide as the, the strip of fiberglass mat that you have made up because you want, you don't want any dry spots or air bubbles. You want, when you press the mat in there, you want it to be fully soaked all the way through and kind of pressed right into the fender. So we'll, we'll paint it as wide as the, as the strip that we cut. And then we'll just give that a press into place. Something like that. And you can actually see the resin soaking through the mat in some places there where I really painted it in there thick. So that's looking good. And then rather than painting the resin I find because then it starts whipping out the the fiberglass strands so I just paint the red or I pour the resin on and I try and paint from the middle out I find that works quite well and again if some is good more is better it's good to have lots of resin you really want to soak this soak that mat and again make sure there's no air bubbles and it's really squished in there and pressed right in Yeah, it's looking pretty good for a guy that doesn't know what he's doing. All right, so we'll we'll go in and have a cup of coffee with Mrs. Twin Sticks and and let that harden up. See how it turns out. Oh, that turned out really nice. It's still a little sticky, so we might let it tack up a bit more. Yeah, I think that's gonna work great. <laughs> awesome. All right, we'll tilt the hood up and uh, do the same thing on the other side. Pretty decent. Of course, that was a little tricky because it was so flimsy, but I did my best with it. 
Now one trick that I kind of learned is you come back after about 10 minutes and you just give a little tap just to make sure you squeeze out all the air bubbles and to make sure that this is uh, pressed right in there into the crack to make sure that it's gonna make it strong. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, a little air bubble there. Let's press that in. Nice. So we'll let that harden up and then we can start sanding on it. Yeah, that turned out really nice. So what I'm planning to do now is we'll, we'll, we'll sand this down, we'll rough it up a bit, and then I'm gonna put in a thin layer of fiberglass filler to build that back up and then we can keep sanding it smooth and then we can get it ready for primer and eventually paint. But I think that's gonna work really well. That's nice and solid. And then I also wanted to mention that I was driving past, someone threw some garbage into a ditch just uh, down from my place and I kept driving past it day after day and finally one day I stopped because it looked awfully familiar. And check that out. It's actually a piece of the fender off a of 900A. It's like the exact piece that I'm working on here to patch. So how funny is that? Obviously we don't need it because I'm happy with the way this repair is going, but we'll just keep that for spare parts and maybe use it on the next 900A that I build. But too funny, half a mile from my house. Okay, let's mask up and start sanding that down. Who's gonna chop my baby's timber? Oh, well, I'm gone. Who's gonna call it all my time? Just to do the beginning of the things I see. Who's gonna chop my baby's timber? Oh, when I'm gone. I said, oh, when I'm gone. Yeah, when I'm gone. I said, oh, who's gonna chop my baby's timber? Oh, when I'm gone. When I'm gone. Well, who's gonna chop my baby's timber? Yeah, that's good stuff. It's actually, uh, what is it called? Long strand fiberglass reinforced body filler. And it actually, it spreads like jam. I've actually tried the short strand and the short strand's more like, uh, like Bondo. Whereas this stuff, you can spread it really thin and it just spreads beautifully. Like I say, I like putting jam on toast. So we'll let that tack up and then we can start sanding that down. And see the little strands of fiberglass in there. So let's sand that down and see if we can't get that smooth. Dusty. Starting to smell like a body shop in here. Okay, so that didn't turn out too bad. So I think what I'm gonna do now is put on some, some glazing and spot putty and fill in any little minor imperfections and then we can, we can go up to uh, a higher grit and try and get this really smooth. So I got an expression that I like to use. It's called making use of the minutes inside the minutes. So while I was letting that dry, I figured I'd move over to this fender. So I sand it down, same thing. And then I put that long strand glass filler in there. So now we can flip back. And while this side dries, we can start sanding down this 
this glaze. Yes, you get the idea. So the the glaze is filling in all the low spots. So right now I'm hitting it with 120 and I'll just keep working my way up and fill it back in and then sand it down. And eventually we should get a pretty nice finish. But that's a far cry from where it was. Not too shabby for a guy who doesn't know what he's doing. So I still have a lot of work to do sanding down this truck. So I'm gonna hang out here and keep doing that. And while I do, enjoy this short on the hunt. So we got a little on the hunt bonus today. There was this one truck that I had to come and take a look at. Spot this. 81 359 feet. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Got the waterfall. Air cleaner caps. Paint looks really nice. Oh, yeah. Interior looks really good. Wow, I wonder why the guy's selling it. Looks like six inch straight pipes, polished tanks, half fenders. Oh, I like these little nut covers on the on all the bolts. Oh yeah, look what he did. So his suspension hangers were worn out as well. So he just put a plate in there and welded them. I'm surprised you can weld in the cast. Must be someone that knew what they were doing. Tanks are hidden down below. Yeah, I like that. Rather than having them hanging from the, the frame rails. 22.5, so it's got the, the smaller wheels. Take a look at the ranch. Oh, I like the Luber Finer. That is really nice. This drops already off. So must have been looking already. Yeah. I'm digging the duck. Alright. Try and lift it this way. Oh. Okay. So you did a quick green paint job underside of the hood and the shroud for the radiator. So what we got here? It's like a 400. Yeah, 400 big cam. Got a little bit of work done to it. front brakes. Not surprising. I didn't think front brakes came out in 81 on the 359s. I wonder if uh, he added it. Oh, yeah. Four out handle. You got to use the trick that Ezra did with his peak where he welded the tab in there so it's tightened him up again. Okay. He's got the legacy seats in here. Yeah, and he put the armrests on one side and not the other, so there was still access. But I can tell that he's got the seat kind of kinked over to the left.
boys with the charging station are going to come and give a little boost here. Yeah, it looks very familiar. I like the deck plate, but this must be a shorter chassis, shorter frame than mine. Because I think my deck plate would come to about here. Then the fifth wheel bolts it on. So it's a little bit shorter, a little bit lower with the 22 fives. Still a really nice truck. Oh, I was wondering how he had the green Peterbilt logos, but it looks like he just put paint and it came off on this side. Yeah, someone sure went over this one. And because it's an aluminum frame like my Iron Duke cab over, it doesn't have the double channels. So you don't have that rust jacking going on. But I imagine there's probably some corrosion. Well, it did say it was a California truck. So maybe it didn't get a lot of exposure to salt. Because even where the, the steel components meet the aluminum frame, it doesn't even look corroded. little water pump lights underneath. It's actually pretty cool. Well, I might as well help out get the covers off. I'm digging these weird style boxes. Oh, those look like brand new batteries. Huh. Must have a, a draw from somewhere. Unfortunately, it's not straight pipe. Look at that ugly thing. Probably not going to sing quite as loud as I'd, I'd hope. But yeah, it's a very nice truck. Got it certified. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I missed the original sleeper. It was just too far gone, but I do love the second door. stainless. Bubbles actually did that on his feet. Get those, I think for Roadworks sell those, sell those, but this is really nice. A little plastic chrome insert for the window. I'd like to get one of those. Okay, it looks like you upgraded the door seals. Redid the carpet. Yeah, very cool. Sounds like an engine knock, but it's just a step. Well, I can't figure out for the life of me is why is it only smoking out of one stack? Is one deleted like a new W990 or what? Oh, yeah, smoking away. Well, one thing you can always count on with old Cummins is they smoke when they're cold. Are getting so sought after. Yeah, 